Hi, it's DeWire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, boxing is really an oligarchy, right? There are few people with a lot of power. Just think of the big managers or the big promoters in the sport. They're not that many, right? If you count on your fingers the number of big-time promoters in the sport, I'm not talking about regional promoters, I'm not talking about Russell Peltz, I'm talking about big-time promoters, right? The Eddie Hearns of the world, the Frank Warrens of the world, the Oscar De La Hoyas of the world, right? It would take a lot of effort to get past your ten fingers. Well, let me right here throw a challenge flag. We'll pretend this red hat is a red flag on boxing. Right? Sometimes the easiest bets to make are the ones that boxing politics dictates. Now I want you to think about the elite guys at 147. Folks, they're all over the place, right? As Bay Area rapper from back in the day, High Skills used to tell me, Rich, it's thick, right? Just the fights happening. Amir Khan against Terrence Crawford, right? Those are two big names. Uh, the fight that just happened, Errol Spence, Mikey Garcia, Right? You have Manny Pacquiao, you have Keith Thurman, you have Sean Porter, you have Jeff Horn. Right? Countless guys at middleweight. You even have guys like Adrian Broner around the mix. Well, understand somehow, and it's really an outrage, <laughs> somehow, Adrian Granados will be fighting Danny Garcia for the WBC silver welterweight title. Now the silver title isn't the same as the gold title. But something's wrong here, isn't it? With all the talent at 147, with all the up-and-coming fighters at 147, right? What exactly did Adrian Granados with six losses do? to deserve a shot at the World Boxing Council's silver welterweight title. Well, why don't we pause for a moment and let's just look at his last two fights, right? He, fight, he fought Adalberto Borquez, whose record is 29 wins, 18 losses. Before that, this is literally the fight two fights ago. He fought Luis Fernando Valdez. Three wins, 11 losses, two draws. Right? Even heavyweight Lucas Brown would be embarrassed to have this guy on his resume. Folks, we're not cherry picking here. This is a recent Adrian Granados fight. So clearly, he must have had big wins somewhere along the line, recently, to qualify for a shot at the WBC Silver Welterweight title. The fight before that, he fought Javier Fortuna. Folks, that was a no decision. The fight before that, he fought Sean Porter. He lost. The fight before that, and now we're well back in 2017. He fought Adrian Broner. He lost. Before that, he fought a guy named Ariel Vasquez. This is 2016 now. Vasquez's record, 12 wins, 15 losses, 2 draws. My point to you is that Granados has gotten the fight against Danny Garcia. Because, in my opinion, he's a sacrificial lamb. I see nothing on this resume <laughs> that tells me that this guy 
is more deserving than about 15 guys at welterweight for a shot at the WBC silver welterweight title. <clears throat> now, Danny Garcia, who just fought Sean Porter, who has a very impressive resume, who has wins over people like Amir Khan on his resume, whose loss other than his loss to Sean Porter was a narrow loss to Keith Thurman. Right? Danny also has wins over people like Lamont Peterson. I understand how Danny is in position for this fight. I don't understand how Adrian Granados, decent fighter, just not a fighter who deserves this shot at this moment in his career. I don't know how he got the spot. So, style-wise, it's going to be a shootout. But technique-wise, Danny Garcia is the far superior fighter. Garcia is a mid-range hooker, but he has a straight right hand. Right? Understand. <coughs> he beats El Terrible Eric Morales with it. Right? Garcia also, of course, has beaten Lucas Matisse, who you might recall recently fought Manny Pacquiao. The bet I like here is Danny Garcia to win. You're not getting great odds. So what we're going to do is we're going to structure the bet. So if Danny Garcia simply wins by decision, you break even. Where we'll make our money is by putting some on Danny Garcia by stoppage. I know Granados went the distance with Sean Porter. I know Granados went the distance with an out-of-shape Adrian Broner. Let's be clear here. Broner was so out of shape for their match that the official weight for the match couldn't be announced until days before the fight. That's how out of shape Adrian Broner it was. Right? Granados is a guy who brings a lot of energy and intensity. He has fought big names. Right? But when he steps up against the big names, he hasn't been able to to win. I think Danny Garcia, by contrast, is very hungry. Right? Having just lost to Sean Porter, I think Danny is eager to keep his name in the mix. At least looking at Danny's resume, I understand why Danny's in this fight. I think a lot of punches are going to be landed. I don't expect either fighter to spend a lot of time on their back foot what we're gonna find out with Danny Garcia is that Garcia has certain tricks that he uses <coughs> you can't tell if a Garcia punch is going up top or down low Garcia has power with both hands the way to survive against Danny Garcia is to move like Lamont Peterson did the second half of their fight. If you stay in the pocket, like I expect Adrian Granados to do, you might get stopped like Amir Khan did. I like Danny Garcia big here. As I said before, though, because the casino has priced this fight correctly, I'm just structuring the bet in a way where I break even if Danny just wins the fight. In other words, whatever the small payout is that you're getting, if Garcia wins, move that anticipated small payout to Garcia by stoppage. So if he wins by stoppage, then you get a decent little profit. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you believe that Adrian Granados deserves the shot at the WBC Silver Welterweight title. Tell us why in the comment section of this video. Right? As I've said, he lost to Sean Porter. Before that, he lost to Adrian Broner. Two fights ago, he fights a guy who's below 500. 
against Javier Fortuna, it's a no decision. In a crowded welterweight division where guys who have held the belt. Guys who have held the belt. Right? Chris Algieri, for example. Jeff Horn, for example. Guys who have held the belt and who don't currently have it aren't in line for this shot. Right? Think about Jeff Horn for a moment. Jeff Horn lost to Terrence Crawford. Right? Lost to a credible opponent. He's not in line for this shot. Somehow, Adrian Granados, after fighting guys below 500, fighting a guy with 18 losses, himself with six losses, losing to Sean Porter, no decision to Javier Fortuna, somehow he's getting the shot. Right? This is political matchmaking. When you see this, you understand, in my opinion, <coughs> that one fighter in the bout is being showcased. I don't believe that fighter here is Adrian Granados. I think this is a showcase for Danny Garcia. I'm expecting him to look tremendous. And I'm hoping to profit off the performance. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.